I want to tell you all about a couple of opportunities that have presented themselves since the restructuring for me. The first involves the uh, schedule reduction effort for the HS601 commercial satellites. And back a couple of years ago, we were struggling because we were overrunning our budgets in integration and test by factors of three. Um, many people have made estimates. All the estimates I saw were above $50 million budget overrun for the total integration and test effort. So we were, we were in trouble a couple of years ago, and we looked at our production rate, and we were going to have to double our production rate. And even in the old system, we were using too much test equipment, we were using too much floor space, and we were burning out our people who were working round the clock, 21 shifts a week, weekends, third shift, everything. So we set a goal after the restructuring. We said, we're going to cut this down from nine months through integration and test, working round the clock, to four and a half months. That was our goal. And we wanted to give the people the third shift and the weekends off. So we had a uh, synchronous workshop. We invited 50 representatives from six business units. And we had a diagonal slice representation. We had program managers. We had line managers. But most importantly, we had the people closest to the work who really knew the problems. And we put our process up on the wall and drew little block diagrams. And every business unit stepped up and said, I think I'll take ownership for that particular process, that block on the wall. And so we talked about what it would take to meet the schedule goals for each of those blocks. And everybody went off to their little rooms and worked on it and came back and had a lot of good ideas. But when we added them all up, it wasn't going to be enough. It wasn't nearly enough. So we needed some radical rethinking here. We couldn't just make little incremental changes. So the breakthrough came when uh, somebody, as a matter of fact, it was somebody closest to the work, spacecraft leader, came up with this idea for implementing demand pull work cells. And I don't know how many of you have been to CMI boot camp or read about demand pull, but it's a fantastic opportunity to uh, get rid of inefficiencies, to balance a factory, and to really eliminate the waste from the system. Um, the magic of a work cell is that instead of a, a program team following the spacecraft through um, high bay and reinventing the wheel every time, the people and the test equipment stay in one place and the satellite moves from work cell to work cell. So that team owns that process. And that team can automatically ap apply lessons learned because they know that they're going to be doing the similar process on the next <coughs> spacecraft that comes through. So they own that process, and they are completely responsible for what goes on in that process. They do their own staffing. They draw their own process charts. They figure out what tests they're going to run to meet the customer's needs. And they make the decisions. The people closest to the work are empowered to really run that work cell. Also, the business units um, have the responsibility for these cells. And the business units that are providing the units, the hardware that come into system and integration and test, have a direct link then. The lessons learned are fed back to the hardware areas. And there's an incentive for the unit areas now to deliver good hardware. So where are we? Uh, we've been at this a year. The synchronous workshop today is the first birthday. As a matter of fact, it was a year ago today. And we've implemented work cells. And uh, we've got a production manager. We're all working on the same enterprise scheduling system. And we're finding some troubles. We're finding that it isn't as easy as we thought it was. Uh, the biggest difficulty has been the cultural change. Big, big difficulty. We thought, well, we'll just roll out this information. You know, we presented it to upper management. They bought in before we finished the presentation. They thought, fantastic, I'm committed. We thought, we'll just roll it out to the troops, and it's so logical and normal and orderly that people will instantly say, sure, that makes sense to me. Didn't work that way very well at all. We roll it out, and a counterpart of mine, Gavian Miata, said, you really have to work the people issues more. And I said, oh, come on, how hard could that be? You know, the big shots bought in, people see it right away. And that was very true. We learned that the people side of it was the biggest barriers. That um, the people didn't want to feel like assembly line workers. That the customers, they said, hey, I don't want to be just another satellite in your factory. I want to be special. I want to know the people who are working on my, my satellite. And we had difficulty with control. That was a biggie. People wanted to know, what am I responsible for? And when we would tell them, if they got any indication that somebody else was trying to do that, it was really tough for them. They said, oh, we're going back to the old way. This is very threatening. And it was very, very difficult to change the culture of this company from a federation of programs, like you saw in Steve Dorfman's chart, 
to a process organized company. But we've had some successes. We haven't quite strung together a satellite yet in four and a half months, but every work cell has met its individual goal on at least one satellite. As a matter of fact, one work cell, the bus test team, has come up with a new goal of their own. Management set a goal to meet the four and a half months. They met that. They came up with a new goal, 30% below the original goal. And they're the ones that came up with that. And they figured out how to do it. We came to them and management said, what do you need to do this job? And they came up with a list of what they needed. Cables. They needed cables. They needed chairs. Just things that we never would have thought of that would be a problem for them doing the test. And they said, this is what we need. So we prioritized the list, got everything for them, and they met that goal. And now they've got a satellite in their test cell, and they're going to make that 30% reduction. So it's, it's working pretty well. We, we have a lot of work to do on the people issues still, and we never could have imagined that 95% of our effort was going to be on these people issues. We never could have imagined that. We thought, ah, design, you know, that'll be a big thing, and we'll spend a lot of time on that. But the people issues, very difficult. And now that we recognize that, we, we're spending a lot of time on it. Incidentally, the savings, um, $2 million in my operation, we're a very small part of the total, very small. So we see real potential in this, but it takes a lot of work. And just like Jeff says, we can't give up, never give up. The other lesson I wanted to share with you um, involves a little bit more of a personal observation. <clears throat> and uh, we were struggling with how to manage the organization with two levels of management removed. Steve Dorfman showed you the org chart, two levels gone. We figured, well, we'll just kind of do things like we have been doing, old department managers and lab managers. We saw how they'd done it, so we, we did that. And uh, about month after the synchronous workshop, Steve Dorfman and the OOPS, Office of the President, called all of the managers into a room and presented the objectives and the strategy for meeting those objectives. And we were asked to flow this information down to the troops, as you heard, and bring back the barriers to meeting that strategy. So we did that, and I went out, and I talked to the troops, and I told them, you know, geez, here's our goals. We have to get Rona down, and we have to strategies implement the satellite factory. And so I stood up at the easel, and I was, getting, I was prepared to get a few comments about, you know, what barriers do they have. And at the end of the session, I felt like I'd been plastered against the wall by a fire hose. It was the feedback. There was incredible straight talk. Too much. We were just deluged <laughs> with all the complaints. And they were all things that I felt personally responsible. Management wasn't doing their job. We weren't supporting the employees. We were treating them like numbers. We were laying them off without any concept of who they were, what their interests, what their desires, what their abilities were. We weren't accessible. They never saw us. We were not providing the objectives that they needed to figure out how to do their job. I heard that 60% of my organization had their resumes out and was looking. We heard um, we had been decentralizing system engineering. We shifted it down to the product business units, which I'll talk about in a minute. And many of the system engineers said, I don't want to be in this organization. I want to be in that organization, the, what was left of the centralized system engineering. We said, if we get a chance, we're going to go right back there. And we just don't, we don't have any problem with leaving this organization. So I was very depressed for a couple of days, very bummed. And uh, I couldn't figure out what to do. I thought, man, I'm working incredible hours as it is, and I'm not meeting their expectations. I'm just not doing my job. I'm responsible for this organization, and it ain't working. So about that time, as part of the work cell effort for system tests, we went up to a factory called Numi up in Fremont. And I don't know how many of you have been up there, but if you ever want to see CMI in action, you've got to go up there. It is a profound experience going up there. And we learned that they have a different definition of what management's job is than we do. Our definition was, well, earn value in preparing, staffing, and making decisions. And so their definition was that management's job is to provide the objectives to the employees, like how many cars per day to produce, and then figure out what the employees need, what the guys on the line need to do that job. We said, well, that's kind of different. So I brought that, that philosophy back, and I teamed up with my counterpart in my sister organization, Tom Jeffroy. And the two of us decided we were going to redesign our jobs. Nobody ever, had ever done this deputy operations leader job before. So we figured, you know, we, could, we had some liberties here. We could change some things. So what did we do? We set up office hours. We spent at least five hours a week walking around, listening to the employees, getting to know them, getting to know their names. We shared information. We had all hands meetings where we shared our process for salary merit reviews and how they were decided. We shared manpower forecasts. We talked about them. We, we talked about their fears. 
we listened, we coached, we were coached. And one thing that was kind of tough is to find time to do all this. That was very difficult. So we took a look at how we were going to find some time, and we decided on two options, two tacks. One was to challenge the requests that were coming in and see if they were non-value added. And as Dave Nakatani could tell you, I challenged quite a bit. <laughs> and I would get uh, requests for briefings. People would say, oh, we need some view grants. I need you to come to a meeting over here in another building. And I said, well, how about I send you some email instead and talk on the phone. And if you still have questions, we'll come over. But you know, they didn't. We, we informalized a lot of our communications, email, bulletin boards, just talking to people on the phone, voicemail. We, in, we informalized that. We spent a lot less time working on view graphs. The other thing we did is we shifted authority and responsibility down, down, way down, as low as we could get it. Sometimes we shifted it too far. We uh, shifted it um, too far sometimes, but we made corrections. We uh, shifted up again. We sponsored. We coached. And we set up teams. It was interesting. We asked for volunteers. And the team, the team members came out of the woodwork. We have teams for recruiting. They have filled 17 of 23 positions in three months. We have a team to figure out hardware and software purchases. They came in under the budget last year, and everybody knows that they can go to the software team and make their case and be considered fairly for whether they get a new computer. And the results so far have been that uh, morale, I would say, is up. It's hard to measure it. But every time we'd have an all-hands meeting or put out an IDC that shared information, the morale-o-meter would move up. You could see it jump. The other results were our attrition is uh, less than any other similar organization in the company. Got that from the System Engineering Network. And also, some of these employees who said, I'm leaving. One in particular said, the first opportunity I get, I'm going over to this other business unit. That was a year ago. Last month, he was offered a job over there. He said, I think I'll stay. I like what's happening here. So we're seeing some good things. We're also seeing that some things aren't working, like system engineering is not working as well as it should. We've had some successes, we've functionalized it, but we're not focusing on our customer like we are. So I think that the approach that we're taking so far is going to be similar to my management job reorganization. We're going to look at our customers, identify them first. In my case, the employees are my customers. Prioritize their needs and then look for the waste and get rid of it. Anything that doesn't meet the customer's needs has to go. And that's how we're going to turn system engineering around if we can. Well, my nugget, all right? If all of you have been sleeping so far and you wake up for my nugget, my wisdom, it's hard, it's very complicated because I, I came up with about six nuggets and none of them really did it. But here it is. We hire and we have incredible people in this company. That, that force of employees is incredible. It's, it's a power that we have to control and we have to set objectives as managers, set objectives to those employees, then find out what do you need to meet those objectives and give it to them. Those group of people, they want to charge. They just need to be told which hill and be given some ammunition. Thanks for listening. <laughs>